friends. Hope you're doing well. Question of the day. What, uh, what, what do you want for Christmas? Um, for those that celebrate, uh, or Hanukkah, or whatever holiday, uh, you celebrate, or if you just, um, you know, celebrate, uh, capitalism by <laughs> buying yourself a gift. What is that, what is that gonna be? Um, on my wish list, uh, there's a, it's, it's hard to explain, it's a tabletop clamp, so it clamps onto a table, and then it has a, a telescoping pole, um, and then on that you can mount tripod heads, or I have this other piece that's like a, a horizontal bar, so it's like a upright, and then I can horizontal, so I can do top-down videos. So that's pretty exciting. Also, it's very nice because um, just with a tabletop clamp of it, I could clamp it onto my desk. Um, and because the, the tripod configuration takes up most of the desk. Um, so even though it's a, it's a tiny tripod, it's a, a relatively big camera, like any camera I would use would be, would take up a lot of real estate. And because it needs to be so far away from my face to be in focus, you know, so if I can mount it somewhere else, you know, then I can put it over to my desk, um, and then I could do some more of those, uh, photo editing videos that, uh, people seem to like. Um, then also, um, there is a bitch game that I won't. Uh, there's a Scott Pilgrim video game that came out ten years ago. Um, and apparently it's, it's pretty good, I never played it. But they're bringing it to the Switch sometime in the next month, and I have a Switch. Um, and, yeah. So that's something else I want. Uh, that's really, those are the two big things. Although I think I might buy myself another kettlebell. Um, because I've got s six, right now, six kettlebells. I've got, um, two 36 pounds, or 16 kilograms. I've got two 53 pound or 24 kilograms. I've got a 32 kilogram, which is 70 pounds, and then a 40, I think it is, kilogram. It's 106 pounds. So I need, um, I kind of want to get some 20 kilogram, a pair of 20 kilogram bells, um, and then I kind of want like a 63, they have a 63 pound. Um, I kind of want that. That's so just the kind of those in-between bells, and then an 88, those are the three I want, um, well, four, because I want a pair of 20s, um, but, uh, yeah, I don't think I need, I think if I just got one of, you know, a, a 20 kilogram, uh, I don't know what that would be, 29 kilogram, I don't know, whatever 63 pounds is, um, and then an 88 pound, I think I'd be set, and I don't think I would need any more kettlebells. Although I also kind of want like a really little one, like a uh, like an 18 pound one, um, which is nice for doing like super high rep stuff, uh, bottoms up presses. But then of course I'm gonna want a pair of those too. So then, but those are relatively cheap, and you can get them. You know you can get them locally. I don't have to go online and pay all the extra shipping for it. But um, they're sold out at a lot of places. Rogue Fitness is where I get most of mine from. Um, and they have those in stock. So, you know, maybe I'll, maybe I'll splurge and buy myself two real light ones so that I can get the, get it going, uh, with the super high rep stuff. Cause I've been having a lot of fun doing high rep stuff with, um, let me see, oh, they're right here. These little guys, uh, they're called egg weights. And so you can, uh, slip them over your finger here and then you get them in your fist um they come in different weights they get kind of expensive like a pair of these was like 40 bucks but it's like a pound or two uh it's more just the form of it it fits in your fist um so the point of this would be like if you did shadow boxing which i've been doing a lot of boxing um because it's really fun um but then also there's um a lot of movements you can do, like if you do marching, where you really swing your arms too, um, these will help with that and that get your heart rate going. Um, and because they're small, you can, you can actually
just like go for a walk with them and you don't feel like a nerd carrying like those little you know little dumbbells um i'm not cool enough to there's some like super fitness guys that'll carry like five pound dumbbells which is like great um and that i could probably do that but i would feel dorky but those guys are like hulks so they're just like and they don't care if they feel dorky because they could just crush your head <laughs> so not quite there yet um so i, I just take these guys and I've got a weighted vest, which I really like that too. Um, and I'll wear that under like a hoodie or something. So people don't think I'm like, yeah, cause a weighted vest is essentially what it is. It's, a, it's a called a plate carrier is what they call them. And they're basically just bulletproof vests. Um, and then the, the plates are, that's really what a, a bulletproof vest is. It's just a vest and then you put a metal plate in it. And so a weighted vest, most of the basic ones are just that, but the weights, the plates are much heavier than normal. So, um, it does look a little intimidating for me to like go for a walk with, you know, like the, the, the plate carrier, even though I'm walking like a little, you know, 19 pound dog. Um, so I'm just like super badass walk in with my aviator shades and my plate carrier. And my little dog. <laughs> He's a good dog, though. He's very vicious, though. He will bark at everybody. Although he'll be your friend if you if you make the effort. He'll be, he usually is cool with everybody. Um. So there's that. So that's those are the kind of the things I'm hoping for for Christmas or my by myself. Um. And uh, other than that, just like a bunch of like random clamps. My parents are like they spoil us. I'm 34 and my parents are still like, what do you want for Christmas? And I'm like, I don't know. I just buy everything for myself now. Thanks though. Um, so I asked them for some, there's like clamps for photography stuff and video stuff, filmmaking stuff. Um, it's hard to explain what they do, but they're, they, you, they, they go on things and then have connectors to put camera things on. And so it's, it's kind of like some days, uh, like Lego, you know, you've got all these pieces and you have problems to solve and you're like, okay, well, what tools do I have to solve this problem? And then you just go at it. Um, so two that, so two that I'm really excited about, they're called coupler clamps. Um, I just call them bike clamps, but essentially it's a, um, so it's a, it's a, it, it goes around a pipe and then it has a, the standard spigot to go onto like a light stand. So what you can do is, it's called a goal post. Um, you would set up two light stands on either end of the scene, and then you would get the two couplers, the pipe clamps, and then you would run a long pipe between them, and then you can hang stuff off that pipe. So you can essentially ceiling mount um, lighting equipment without um, needing to, to access a ceiling, which a lot of times there's, there's not really a good grip point on the ceiling. Um, unless it's like a drop ceiling, then you could pull a dial out and you can rig to the rafters that are up above it. Um, but so a lot of times you, you can't do that. So, but you don't want to see stands in the shot. Um, so you'll do what's called the goal post, which is essentially what I just said, or they also have something called a menace arm, which goes really far. It goes about 17 feet, I think, out, and then you can rig stuff off that. Um, but a menace arm is like five grand, um, whereas pipe clamps are like 30 bucks. So it's a little cheaper to get the pipe clamps. Um, and there's other benefits to pipe clamps. You, know, you can do a lot with a pipe clamp. You can set up backdrops. You can do hair lights. You know, you could do screens, whatever you need. So, yeah, you can block out the sun. You know, there's windows you need to block out. You can get some, some black cloth and string it over the pipe. And good. You know what I'm saying? You can hang things off them. If you want to hang some lights, um, like fairy lights or Christmas lights, um, just, just get. And that actually might be something cool that I could do even in here. I could just get some Christmas lights way in the background. I think that might make a nice uh, backdrop. Christmas ASMR. I don't know why I'm touching my face or doing so many hand movements. Because I think people like hand movements. Um, I said I was going to do more of them. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing with the hand movements. There's just, there's just some for you. Just beep. <laughs> uh, so that's, you know, that's, that's kind of what I'm hoping for for Christmas. Um, other than that, just, you know, good times. Spend some good times.
times with my lady friend um, and hanging out. I don't think I'll be able to see my brothers because uh, of the COVID. Uh, one of them lives in North Dakota and one of them lives in Tennessee. He just got engaged the other day, actually. Ironically enough, so congrats to him. Uh, he's been dating his, his lady for six years. Um, anyway, I haven't seen him. Oh man, how long has it been since I've seen him? I think I haven't seen him in over a year now. Because that last year they went to uh, her parents for Christmas. And uh, they live in Florida. Which I don't blame them. I'd rather go to Florida too. Although I don't think it snows in Tennessee. So I don't think it ever really gets cold there. Uh, at least not super cold. And maybe it does. I don't know. Just tell me. Um, but yeah, Nebraska gets cold. So it's hard to like come here for winter. Because it's like, ah, oh, this sucks. <laughs> So there's that, you know. Um, yeah, that's uh, that's the that's the Christmas situation over here. Um, yeah, I don't know. Just uh, yeah, thinking about things, thinking about holidays, um, thinking about food. Holiday food is good. Um, it's on nestlabs.com. 
it's the registration is closed, but I think you can sign up to be a member of Nest Labs and still get into the class. Um, and it's it's an ongoing four week class, and I started watching the first video, but I didn't finish it. Um, but I have been thinking a lot about how I have all these ideas, and I need to just sit down and like collect them and make a list and just prioritize and then just start executing them and and making them into videos. And I think part of that process is going to be making them as ASMR videos first because then I could just kind of ramble at it and talk and kind of like be surprised by what comes out of my own head. Um, Cause like even yesterday I made a video about investing and you know, I started talking about like, well, I mean, investing your time. And I was like, oh man, I can make a whole video about that for, you know, my other channels. Um, Cause I really, you know, as much as I like want to make a living putting people to sleep, it would be great to also like help people, inspire people. I think that's a really cool thing. And I feel like I, I get so many things that learn and improve my life. And I like want to give those back to people and like, uh, you know, help people. Cause it's, I see, you know, so often like yesterday I was so like, I started yesterday's video. Well, not as well as yesterday. It was like super early this morning, depending on if you want to be technical, but when I say yesterday's video, um, I saw a tweet and I didn't know how to like phrase this in a way that like doesn't sound callous. Um, but somebody tweeted about this really long food pantry line. Cause there's a, there's a food pantry in town and the line is super long. And, um, his comment was like, but the stock market's doing great. Huh? And I'm like, well, yeah, but like, see how you just gave the solution to the problem like right like like I get it like it's not easy I think that's the thing is like it's not easy to change your situation but it is like so much harder when you have like a victim mindset and just shedding that victim mindset and like thinking like well what can I do you know what can I take control of and I think people underestimate how much they can affect change in their life um it's scary and it's hard like it's not easy and i don't want to be like this is easy but it's it is possible and i think everybody can do it and so it's like how do you say that without sounding like a jerk you know and it's like well like okay well look at you you know this tweet is like you just said well the stock market's doing great like it is like if you had put money into the stock market uh, it would be worth a lot more today than when you did when like especially if you bought the dip you know, that's what they say buy low sell high so in march when everything fell off a cliff if you were just buying you would have just fire sailed and if you had like a good amount of money uh, which again is easier said than done to buy all these stocks you would have made a substantial sum of money and that's why people are like oh well you know, these super rich billionaires got so much richer over the pandemic. And it's like, well, yeah, because they had cash on hand and they, they basically bought all these stocks when they were on sale and they all came back. Like, yeah, like it, it, it's so it's like, how how can we do that? You know, we're beat down. I have like 500 bucks in my bank account. Like, what can I do? to correct that like I've been doing the stocks I've been you know making trades and you know I've just by taking a little bit and you know not eating out as much and by doing intermittent fasting so I'm not even I doing intermittent fasting for my health but a side benefit is that you save money because you're not spending money on food so it's like you take these little bits and you know it's 50 it's 100 bucks at a time and you start making some stock plays, and if you make some good ones, which isn't, it's not as hard as you think it is to make good stock plays, and you don't have to make great stock plays, like, just get that out of your head, that like, your stuff's not gonna moonshot, you're not gonna buy a stock, and it's not gonna go up 110% in a year, but like, it could go up 5%, it can go up 10%, and it's like, it's not unrealistic to get like a 20% return, so like, think about, how I, I now have a stock account that's worth like eleven thousand dollars when when the year started it was only worth five thousand and like my workload is down this year and you know 
I, it just comes down to like I was saving money and I was was putting money into the investments of learning how investments work. I was learning about options trading and how to like do that smartly um, and not just be gambling with it. And you know, I'm not obviously I'm not out of the woods yet. My bank account only has 500 bucks. I mean, I got some paychecks here. So I have my rent's covered for next month. Um, but like if I had to, I could liquidate my stock account and I could live for, you know, four or five months, like without a huge, huge problem as long as no other like big financial thing came up. So it's like, okay, I've got a safety net. I've got a security net and I can start building from there. And so, you know, there's, there's people that, that, especially like uh, his name's Gary Vaynerchuk, this guy I like a lot, talks about how people are kind of reluctant to step back, you know, like, it's like, okay, well, maybe that means moving back in with your parents for a year and saving money to get that safety net, you know, like, yeah, that sucks a lot, but like, you know what else sucks a lot? Being broke. Like, I've been broke. It sucks. Like, I've been in a places where like, barely, like, I would have less than $100 to pay my bills, like, and you're just eating mac and cheese for every meal. Like, yeah, man, I've been there. It sucks. So it's like, what can we do to get out of it, you know? And so it's it's thinking about how to do that. And what I respond to is probably not what most people respond to. I kind of respond more to, like, the tough love. Here's the greedy reality of the situation. And I'm realizing that, like, a lot of people don't really jive with that type A personality stuff. Um, so it's trying to figure out how to, how to sell it and, and how to shed kind of the, some of the snake oil from it because there is like this air of productivity born, for lack of a better term. You people like Tim Ferriss, like a four-hour work week. And it's like, if you really look into that, the four-hour work week is essentially just like exploit people from third world countries. Ah, and you're like, okay, well, that's kind of gross. Like, that's not what I meant by having, like, a productive life. You know, and then the other stuff is like, dude, up super early. And I'm like, why? Who cares? Like, if I can make a living comfortably staying out till 3 in the morning, you can do it too. You know, you just have to, like, when you go to sleep and when you wake up, has no bearing on anything with productivity. Like, the only bearing it has is total amount of time you sleep. You need to get enough sleep. That's it. After that, fuck them. Who cares? Who cares when you go to bed? Who cares when you wake up? It doesn't matter. There's people that will, like, shame you for it and guilt you for it. But, like, if you can make a living and you don't need a 9 to 5, fuck it. Just go to bed when you want. Go to bed when you're tired. Wake up without an alarm. Then go do your stuff, you know? Like, there are a lot of careers out there that you can do that, like... You can work for yourself. You can affect change. You can do these things. And sleep is not the thing. That's not the secret sauce. You know, a great, a lot of CEOs get up at five in the morning and blah, 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 blah. It's like, that's what they say. But do they really? I don't know. They might be taking naps every day. Like, great. I get up at five in the morning too if I'm taking a nap at 11 o'clock. Um, so that's, you know, something else that's been on my mind. Um, just kind of just kind of getting that stuff. You know what else has been on my mind? Pizza. I have been hunting for pizza nonstop, and I gotta stop eating. I'm gonna stop eating pizza, but I'm gonna eat. I'm gonna make a frozen pizza after this. So, but I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna get starting. You know, after Thanksgiving, I'm gonna go back on like get back into intermittent fasting. Get back into like doing like chicken and veggies really because my blood pressure was a little high at the doctor again uh which is not good i don't want that to happen because again with diabetes it starts to be compounding problems we're trying to nip that in the butt but again i can affect change it just sucks that i can't eat my favorite foods and i just will do some fasting and, and work on that willpower and start start something start building just little things every day and before you know it, you've got a wall, you've got your weight down, you've got your blood pressure in check. I did it once before, I'll do it again. Watch me. <laughs> so. These are kind of the things I've been thinking about. Um, just like, how can I improve my situation? How can I help people improve their situation? You know, and... I mean, the reality is you got to want the change. You can't just, uh, you can't 
just a half no one's coming to help like that's I think the number one thing you gotta put in your head like if you could put in your mind like no one's coming out okay like what are we gonna do about it like there's a there's a scene I like in the movie Inglorious Bastards where slight spoilers uh the bastards plan that they had goes terribly awry and they have a tremendous opportunity to um to score a big win um, in their their efforts of sabotage, and um, the the lieutenant, the guy in charge of the of the team, is uh, so the, 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 they have a double agent spy, and she's like, "Well, we can't do that now because these people are dead," and he's like. Wait, no, how does it go? Okay, so she's like, she, she, she like says facetiously, like, here's like, oh, so we're gonna do this and we're gonna do that because these people are dead. And he's like, yeah. And she's like, we can't do that. Like, like that sounds, that really sounds like a good plan to you. And he goes, no, it sounds like shit, but what else are we gonna do? Go home. Anyway, the line is the important thing. It sounds like shit, but what else are we gonna do? And that's, I mean, that's life. And so, you know, just that you gotta think about it, like, man, what sounds like shit, but like, what else are you gonna do? Just like, sit on your couch and just like, be miserable forever. Like, no, like, take a stab at it, go affect change. Like, it's not, and it's not these big grandiose, you know, it's, it's just the small things. Just a couple changes you can do every single day. It's, it's, it takes every day and every week. And you do these things, you check the boxes. And if you check enough boxes, you know, it's uh, it's pulling up another movie quote. Like The Martian, problems are going to come up. And you just, you know, if you solve enough problems, you get to go home. And so that's, that's where we're at. If you solve enough problems, happy life. And so, like... The problem is, the problems don't look like problems. You know, they don't, they're not big screaming things in your face. They, you, they're not dragons. It's not sexy. It's cleaning your apartment. It's doing the dishes. You know, it's something at work. It's, like I said yesterday, networking, reaching out to people every day. You know, these small things before you know it. You make friends. Friends recommend you for jobs. You start getting more work. And there you go. It's maybe it's making YouTube videos. What what can you do with your YouTube channel that you can do simply that doesn't take a lot of effort that you could do every day? Like I'm making these whisper videos. I'm doing them every day. Like I'm trying to do them every day. Like I miss sometimes. But it's like okay, my my channel has grown pretty sharply um, from that. Like it's not like insane take off like I haven't like grown like a thousand subscribers but in the last two months I've, I've gained like a hundred which is like not quite ten percent but like that's a pretty for two months for a channel that's been going for five years to have a ten percent growth like that's awesome that's amazing and so it really is just like what can you do every day how can we temper our expectations and like be patient about it that's it that's 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 the key that's the way out that's the path you know and it's it's easy to say that it's very it's a simple plan not a lot can go wrong here it just might take a lot longer than you think so you gotta be patient but you just gotta you gotta trust the path you gotta walk the path every day and you'll get where you're going that's my advice so uh, I hope that doesn't come across like preachy it's something I've been struggling with, but walking and and really starting to see, you know, over this last year, this last couple months, you know, some things went very downhill for me, and this this YouTube channel has kind of been a bit of a cornerstone for me. It's it's something I'm doing every day. You know, I'm taking 20, 30 minutes to, to film these videos, another 20 minutes to edit them, which is really just putting some color on it and then sending it out. Um, it's just, it's, it's made a big difference, you know? And so, what can we 
we do in your life that is this small, takes a half hour, but will, over three months, give you that 10% boost. You know, think about that. Something to think about. You probably already sleep. I hope you are. Anyway, um, I hope you're doing well. And if not, well, I hope that changes. And I hope you can you can think of some things to, to make that change and, and take control, you know, take control of the wheel. So, get some sleep. Then we're going to wake up and we're going to do our little things. And then, uh, you know, I'll see you back here tomorrow. So, have a good one.